I'm Don. I'm April. And I'm Zach. Hey, I'm Allison. Welcome. We're the Sashes. Hi, welcome. I'm Dave. I'm Trish. I found this one in Venice. Here we go. This is one of our favorite trolls. Everywhere. Shark's teeth. Oh, watch out. Alligators. Hurricanes. Last time on Fossil Hunters. We're not obviously at Fossil Hunter headquarters today. We're in Venice, Florida. We have the junior fossil hunters with us here. It is hot. Woo! Definitely bone. That's a uh, whale vertebrae. That is a whale vertebrate. Dead. All right, Trish, hey! first shark's tooth. Shells are the most common fossil in the world. They're found all over the place. Hi there. Moments later, Noah gets a turtle. Came up over here on this spot and looks like a nice little sand tiger here sitting. Turtle carapace. Turtle? Shells are fossils too. What you got? Horse tooth. There's a meg right there. What? Laying out. Where is There's it? A, look at the big one in back of you. Oh! Whoa. Wow! <laughs> This is a mammoth tusk. Believe it or not, I still think it's cool to find anything I can find. Fossil! My name is Don Brunning. In the mid-1960s, I found my first fossil on a beach in Venice, Florida. I was six years old and hooked for life. Hey! Hi! Come on in! We're the Brunnings. I'm Don. I'm April. As you can see, we really love um, Victorian furniture and we love old things as far as fossils and our house was built in 1926, so that's also old and I married Don, he's also old. <laughs> so I started this whole project because of my love for fossils and I've been very fortunate in the fact that I have been able to find quite a bit in my uh, career as a fossil hunter. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Zach. Hey, I'm Allison. Come on in. Come on in. Hi, I'm Zach Zacharias. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Miami, Florida. I've lived in Florida my entire life. I've lived pretty much all over Florida, north, central, south. And um, about 20 years ago when I moved to central Florida, I uh, got a job at the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona Beach. And I've been there ever since. And I'm the uh, senior curator of education there. And I'm also the curator of history. These are all pacas. They're just pets. Their names are... Martin, Coco, and Zachary. Oh, hi. Hiya. Welcome. We're the Sashes. Come on in. So, Sash, what are you doing with all your retirement time? Well, obviously I do, I do some fossil collecting. Um, usually by myself, but I like to take friends who have similar interests. This is the original Florida water park. <laughs> That's right, man. And if we lived any closer, like I said, we'd never get anything done. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Turtle limb bone, but that's recent. 
a couple of shark's teeth. That's a that's snake color, right? That yeah, that's very cool looking. Huh? Shark deer antlers, snake vertebrae. This is all one day. Meg fra fragment. Frag fragmentons. Fragment. <laughs> fragmentons. <laughs> Who doesn't want to have a fossil hunting husband who wants to become a silversmith and make you the coolest jewelry on the planet, so. Hi, welcome, I'm Dave. I'm Trish. And come on in. I'm an airline pilot. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And this is Titan. <laughs> well, I've always liked history, um, all kinds of history, uh, really archeology. span And we've been uh, wanting to get into this project for uh, quite some time. So Dave, Trish, and I head to Venice, Florida in hopes of finding my old mammoth fossil site from the 1980s. Hey, what do you want to do? Let's get out of here. And so we're going to have to call it here from Venice. You know, all in all, had a great time, yeah, but it was great. No, it was a good time. no fossils. Not no this fossils. time, next time. Second uh, shovel. Found sharks. Where are we at? Uh, we are in um, Joshua Creek uh, near uh, Arcadia, Florida. And you're screening? Screening. Using quarter inch screening helps to separate the sediment from the gravel and fossils. Some fossil hunters attach floaters to their sifters. I have a confession to make. Here I am with all my cohorts from Fossil Hunters, and I'm so excited to be here. And this is my very first time. First time fossil hunting. Okay, what do we got in here? I am the spouse at home who gets so excited about everything that John Sasha brings home. So I get to see the collections, ask all the interesting questions, but I never come fossil hunting. Looking for shiny surfaces, uh, symmetric shapes, um, things that just stand out from the normal, irregular uh, gravel. I am beyond terrified of alligators. was a camel tooth. As you can see here. And it was found by one of our junior fossil hunters, Hannah. Up, oh, nice shark tooth right there. Perfect condition, beautiful. A little bit of turtle shell there as well, a little turtle fragment. Uh, I just started um, a website that was to, for uh, collectors to just post their finds and it kind of exploded and now we have about I don't know 15,000 members and half a million I mean posts. like 14 new members a day or something yep. like that yep so place for amateur and professional paleontologists to get together and share information we'll collaborate so we got a small group of osteoderm deer astragalus small piece of a horse tooth. Small three-toed horse tooth. Um, and there's a equus horse tooth and some partial shark teeth, tiger and snaggle tooth. Barely a meg. I found a nice little gator tooth. Hopefully there's no gators around here right now. So uh, here I have some uh, fragments of horse teeth, and then um, right here I found uh, some sort of miscellaneous bone. We think it might be some sort of giant tortoise, but uh, we'll have time to identify it better later on. So I'm not sure what this is here, but um, 
you can see the little holes in it in the air pocket so that does mean it's a bone it has a flat surface so yeah and I found some other shark's teeth There's shark's no teeth all right we're headed to the dugong site and I have Zach's son Quinn with us and we have Alex and Noah our twins with us and Don will be along as soon as he gets his wetsuit on a little chilly today so I'm gonna put on a wetsuit and uh, the guys are waiting for me down by the site problem with these things is they shrink the neoprene tends to shrink like over the last 10 years especially come on it's a nice uh, breezy 60 degrees outside here and the fossil site's right behind me and the water right here is a nice warm 72 degrees so we're gonna get this done as quickly as possible while Alex and Quinn search another part of the spring for fossils Noah and I began fanning holes near my previously discovered dugong site. We're finding small bone fragments, and Noah finds lots of turtle shell. It's always a good idea to bring along a collection bag. Come on. I find a small vertebra that is yet to be identified. As we continue fanning, Noah sights a beautifully preserved dugong vertebra. So Quinn and Alex join us and help uncover it further. As the fossil becomes more exposed, we realize it's broken in two pieces. Alex and Noah carefully separate them for further examination. Where's Dad at? A couple months ago, when my mom came over here and uh, found the site, I expanded on it and I found some uh, dugong skull and some ribs and a few turtle shell. And uh, today I got to expand it even further and we got to find some more beautifully preserved vertebrae and uh, more rib from dugong. This is the rest of the uh, dugong, nice vertebrae and vertical process. And now we're going to go take a little break because it's really cold. So the fossil hunters are behind me over here, working hard in Peace River, and uh, I'm using the dry camera right now, so I'm having to walk real careful. I'm not seeing you guys with a lot of gravel. I'm no. seeing you guys with a lot of yeah. dirt. We're trying to work our way down to the bottom of these holes. Scrape right along the top of the hawthorn. Right on the clay, yeah. We're going to move upstream closer to those banks to see if we can get Trish two or three mammal teeth today. Dun, dun, dun! Now's a good time to pull your stuff out. Huh? Your stuff being <laughs> fossils. <laughs> Got a couple uh, shark teeth underneath the uh, that tree that was down over there. So I like that one. He does so much better than I do with shark teeth. He's a shark tooth guy. He is yeah. the shark tooth. Guy. I like shark teeth. I like it all, but shark teeth really uh, intrigue me. I decide to snorkel for larger fossils in the dark waters of the Peace River. Visibility is about 12 inches. The water is six to eight feet deep. Plenty of places for a gator to hide. And the current's rougher than I thought it would be too. This is gonna to be tougher than I thought. I'm trying to get a handhold on the limestone bottom. I should be wearing gloves. My fingertips are getting raw. And here's a piece of limestone, junk. Speaking of gators, Here's a partial alligator scoot. One of my favorites, a glyptodon scoot. They were distant prehistoric relatives of today's armadillos. This was an odd looking fossil. It's the unfused distal end of a juvenile deer femur. Thanks to the members of the fossilforum.com for the identification. Taxonomy is the practice and science of the classification of organisms. Occasionally, the genus and species of an extinct or living creature will be referred to in this program. A genus is a group of related organisms that includes several different species. A species is a class of individuals having some common characteristics or qualities, distinct, sort, or kind. John reminded me to start looking under bushes, and I found this maxilla of a boss taurus, or cow complete with all its teeth. Right after that, I found the rest of the skull. 
the skull's upside down, so notice the horns are broken off on the bottom. Hi, my name is Ken Fullman, and I'm addicted to fossil hunting. I'm bringing this group down here, the fossil hunters, here to check out the creek I'm digging and show you the area where I found 27 species of fossils. Trish and Dave were fossil hunting with John the day before. They were just a few miles away. So Trish, any luck yesterday? Uh, we had some luck. We got a ton of shark's teeth we pulled up. Um, Dave found a premolar to either a, a prehistoric dog or wolf. Um, Hannah found an ancient sand dollar. Small mako. Maybe a uh, sand tiger. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. It's a nice sweet meg. It's a nice river meg. There you go. A decent size um, meg. Dude, first meg. First meg. Beautiful. It's missing the uh, spinous process. But still, great vertebrae. All right, Ken. All right. That is so pretty. Awesome job, Hannah, junior fossil hunter. I found uh, all these dugong ribs uh, <laughs> down by there. Ken showed me a really good spot. So here's something new and different, fossil art. So can you tell us how you came to create this and what inspired it? Over the years, I've been collecting different types of fossils and I've been getting broken pieces of shark teeth and not really knowing what to do with it. Past years, I've had some talent in making sculptures, so I figured, well, let me try and take those bits and pieces of shark teeth and try to create some kind of art. So um, here we are at Ken's booth at the Shark's Tooth Festival in Venice. Um, Ken, what's the reaction been so far to your fossil art? Amazing. No one's ever seen anything like this before. and. I think they really appreciate what I'm making and I'm glad to share it with them. Here we are at the Venice Shark's Tooth Festival. I have junior fossil hunters Alex and Noah with us. Don's behind the camera. We're going to go check it out. It's Deborah Powell, otherwise known as Fossil Bay. Hey, how you doing? Um, I see you've got a friend with you here. Well, I'm Bill Eberlein. I'm from Savannah, Georgia, and I uh, mainly scuba dive for megalodon shark teeth. I own a business called Mega Teeth Fossils, and I dive pretty much daily for giant shark teeth, giant megalodon shark teeth and other fossils. I met some friends here. This is Steve and Rachel. Hi there. Hey there. They're vendors here at the Shark's Tooth Festival. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're selling today. Okay, well we sell fossils and artifacts and we that's what we do actually. We look for fossils and artifacts, even some of the jewelry that me and my lovely wife make with our hands. I was just walking around and I saw my friend Jody here and uh, I figured I'd come by and take a peek to see what he's been doing this year and I just happened to look down here and you want to help me Jody? Yeah, I've uh, picked up a couple of megs every now and then I'll have a Pretty good day and uh, found uh, a few megs here and there. All right, my name is Frank Garcia and I am an amateur paleontologist and I started doing fossils in 1954 on the banks of Lake Okeechobee with my grandfather. When I was a young boy, I used to ride my bicycle down to the Hillsborough River, collect fossils there. So I slowly taught myself to be a paleontologist. It's more than a job, it's a passion. Sure enough, I broke my leg in five places playing baseball. And I went out to one of the phosphate mines that I knew was really good. Paddled across this moat, crutched up on top of this hill, and on the base of the hill was this beautiful, magnificent skull, of the last of the giraffes, prehistoric giraffes, called Kyptoceros amatorum. Kyptoceros means bent horns, which is Greek, and amatorum in Latin means of the lovers. It was named by Dr. Webb for me and other people that love doing this because we love it. I was very 
very fortunate in 1983 to discover the world's richest earliest ice age site in Hillsborough County and we had over 214 different kinds of animals there. So far 10 of them have been named new to science. I'm responsible for those. You know, I found the first antelope. They named it after, that after me, sub antelope pepper Garcia. Brand new species of antelope. I have worked with the Smithsonian, founded the Tampa Bay Fossil Club in 1986. I am one of the authors of the isolated finds for fossils in the state of Florida permitting program where you pay $5 and get to collect fossils on state property with the exception of state parks. Then I found the little pygmy sea cow, which they named after me, Nano Siren Garcier. There are many others. There's a secretary bird I found on my ranch in Nebraska that's possibly new to science. So I've had a pretty interesting career finding these really key pieces. So this is amazing. It's actually completely overwhelming the amount of fossils you have. Um, where do we start? Well, one that I like to tell people about, and this is a, a megalodon shark's tooth. Um, I like to hunt, or collect rather, in uh, land sites. People have to remember that 90% of the fossils in Florida have not yet been discovered. There's plenty more out there. You have to focus on the unusual shapes. Going down the line, can you show us like some of the species that you've collected? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, we can start off with, there's a hyena jaw, and it's from the Badlands. It's a carnivore. You gotta love carnivores. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, down here I have a 11 and a half inch sloth claw, or sloth core. This right here is part of a walrus tusk, and it's hard to believe that we actually have walruses yeah. in Florida. Another favorite of mine are egg forests, and they are found in Florida, and they're extremely brittle, extremely rare. And actually this species right here is named after a very good friend of mine that I used to fossil hunt with all the time. Wow. So it's nice to know that us women are getting fossils named after us. Mammoth or mastodon? Actually it's a mastodon. How? Because I am the fossil babe. So here we are on an adventure with uh, David Shelley and his daughter, Cora. And so tell us where we are. We are on a spoil island in the Indian River and in the central Florida Atlantic coast. So why would you find fossils out here in the middle of this island? Well, this island is a spoil island. This is where they dug a channel 50 years ago to ship citrus out. And when they dug the channel, they dug in the bottom of the river and they hit a good fossil pocket. If you go back about 12,000 years, this river wasn't here. This would have been a valley. Would have been a nice fertile valley full of grass and animals would have been coming here eating. Of course, they lived here, they died here, and now we're digging them up. We're gonna find snake vertebrates, we're gonna find giant armadillo scoots, we're gonna find, oh man, a hodgepodge of everything. A horse might show up, a camel might show up, and we might even find a mammoth. We're going to see what fossils we find. We're going to talk about these depositional layers and try to learn a little bit more about it later on in the day. All right, how we hunt this area right here and dig through the rocks. Just scooping my hand up. I bet we find some fossils. Like here is a nice piece of turtle shell. I scooped up some sand and dumped it in there and I found this. It looks like a vertebrae. And I caught a little critter, a baby horseshoe crab. Isn't he cute? When I say small stuff here, this is my micro site, I mean small stuff. Go, we have a little snake vertebrae. We have a frog vertebrae. That's the kind of stuff we find here. Hey Don, come over here. Oh yeah. You just found your first mammoth tooth. I did. Hey guys. I think I got a, uh, I don't know, it could be a horse tooth, a tooth of some kind. It doesn't look like horse. Oh my goodness. This is a beautiful sloth. And the neat thing about this sloth is the species name. Our third president, Thomas Jefferson, named that guy. That's the Jeffersonian? That's the Jeffersonian. Oh, we were just talking Absolutely. about that yesterday. We Absolutely. Were. The ground sloth Megalonyx jeffersoni stood about 10 feet tall and was named after President Thomas Jefferson. 
who had received the fossil specimens from Western Virginia. His presentation to the American Philosophical Society is considered the beginning of vertebrate paleontology in North America. Sloth tooth mammoth, where's the mammoth? I guess it's my day. I guess the fossil queen is back. Indian River. Holy cow, honey. Sloth and mammoth. And you've gotten sloth off of here before? I have gotten sloth off of here, and for everybody watching, Indian River is my river. <laughs> Don't Guys, me. stay off it. <laughs> a week later, the junior fossil hunters head to the University of Florida to get their fossil permits. So we're at the Florida Museum of Natural History here with Dr. Holbert, and we're getting our fossil permits today. Uh, will you explain to me why it is important to have a fossil permit? The fossil permits allow you to legally collect fossils on state of Florida land. Just as you can't go to somebody's private property and take fossils off of them without their permission, uh, you need permission from the state of Florida to collect fossils on state land. Say if you were to find some horse teeth or some turtle shell, what, what would we have to do to... Well, each year you fill out a report that includes everything that you have found. Now, the one thing that is excluded from the law are shark teeth, so you don't have to report fossil shark teeth. Uh, but you would just write down, so Peace River found eight dugong ribs, found five horse teeth, or whatever number it is you have found. We just try to keep track of what people are generally finding. And then after 60 days, if you don't hear from us, then the fossils legally become yours, and you can do whatever you want with them. So can you tell me if I can collect on state land or not? Well, you can collect on state land, but there are certain types of state land where you cannot collect. That includes state parks. But for the most part, with a permit, you can collect on most bodies of water that are called rivers, because they are owned by the state of Florida. So the fossil hunters have a new friend named Larry Tannenbaum, and he is a uh, middle school science teacher, and he has offered to take the kids on a dig. So that's really cool, and he wants to teach them a little about fossil hunting and um, what he calls triangles, which are his favorite. So where does Larry collect usually? Well, he usually goes to Gainesville, and he has a nice shallow creek area that he wants to take them, so that's really safe for the kids. All right, well, speaking of Gainesville, why don't we all go up and meet Dr. Halbert? Yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be, be great. Idea. Excellent idea. Yes, sure. we should definitely do that. That would be a great idea. And then I can ask him a lot of questions about the Daytona Mastodon. That would really help me out. I can finally get to meet Dr. Holbert. All right, that sounds like a great idea. And maybe we could get Dr. Holbert to let us see the private collection, the storage area where the vertebrate fossils are kept. Some of my Wakaiba stuff's in there. We could see that from 70s. Yes, we're very scientific here. All my stuff from Wakaiba from back in 1990 is stored down there in their storage area, and not a lot of people ever get a chance to see that. None of it's on display in the museum. Zach and April and I went years ago with Dr. Webb, but since Dr. Holbert's taken his place, maybe we could get a chance to have him take us through a tour of it and maybe even see some of my old stuff. That'd be cool. My name's Larry Tannenbaum. I'm a science teacher in Flagler County and I am a geology major at Stony Brook University on Long Island in New York and I had to teach Florida fossil history and I had nothing. I had minerals and a few fossils from New York and the first person to chime in and help me out was Dave Chelly and he made a donation from my classroom and took me to the Peace River and I got hooked ever since. Okay guys, we're around the corner from where we're going to hunt. 
Um, we're going to be looking for gravel in there. If you tell me that you can't find any gravel, I'm going to send you home because it is all over the place. <laughs> uh, we don't want to dig near the banks. Okay, we just want to dig in the middle to the edge of the banks and we want to leave the place the way we left it. Remember to watch out for glass and don't be afraid to ask for ID on anything. I'm here to help you. Anybody have any questions? Oh, all right, let's go have some fun and find some triangles. All right. All right. And it, you'll find as you go along that uh, Gainesville has pretty colors, all sorts of colors in there. You just got to be patient and look. Some trays will yield two or three teeth. Other trays I've had as many as 40 to 50 teeth. Then I get really excited. Yeah, I'm finding a lot of uh, small bony fish plates right here, uh, bony mouth plates. Uh, a good, a few good sharks' teeth in here. What I found interesting was there's a lot of materials in this specific creek, so you're gonna find a lot of different colors of a lot of different things. This is a fossilized crab claw, and he uh, showed me. This is kind of cool. I ain't never seen this before. It's a really old crab, <laughs> kind of like me. Yeah, like you. Really old and crabby. <laughs> I know there are some people that like to just go out and look for the big stuff, but I'm quite content with finding whatever pops out, even the little babies. I've been throwing a lot of the um, smaller bone fragments out. I got a couple interesting pieces here. I got a couple um, backbones. I don't know if they're here right now. A couple of vertebrae? Even? Yeah, vertebrae, sorry. Um, there's various bone fragments that are intriguing to me I've collected. That may be a little bit of like an ivory tusk, I'm not sure at the moment. It looks like it could be a vertebrae. Larry, can you identify that? I would say that that would belong most likely to a dolphin, maybe small whale, but probably something dolphin, sure. porpoise. I just found a fragment of what might be a horse tooth, but I'm really not sure. Might have to get some backup on that. I've been finding a lot of teeth here. Nice teeth. Just sitting here in this in this pile? Yes. Somebody yes. else's spoil pile and you're pulling teeth out of it. Yes, here's one. So you're getting to sit in the sun, be nice and warm, and you're still finding teeth. I found this nice big one. I just have to find Maybe it. you ought to convince the mothers to do what you're doing, huh? And find some actually find some stuff as opposed to Josh your old mouth. <laughs> It's a good thing that this episode is all about the junior fossil hunters today because they are definitely finding a lot more and better things than we are. This is my first frag. What's it? My first frag. Frag what? Fraglodon. Fraglodon. Nice. That is a whoa. Why is it like saw? Beautiful. Why is, why is there like a saw? Because the you side? have a snaggle tooth. Bunch of sharks. Bunch of sharks too. And just miscellaneous Woo! bones, you know. Check it out, girl. You know. The more I look at this, as it dries, the more I'm thinking it's horse. That is a neat color. I don't have one of that. That may have to go into my Riker mount. There you go. Cool. So. Awesome. So gator, good. gator, gator. Yep. Go gators. All right. Would it be croc? It's croc, and you got two of them. Look at that. Mm -hmm. One, two different colors and two different sizes. How, How about cool that? Is that, dude? If I could, uh. Sum so up this day, be the day of broken triangles and broken dreams. Triangles rule and fossil on! Early the next morning, I boarded Aquanuts Dive Charter with Captain Mike, Jeff Carter, and fossil hunter Ben Schultz. Everything down there is dead. What do you think? You want to stay or move? We'll stay here. Despite the effects red tide might have on us, we begin our descent and our fossil hunt. Upon reaching the bottom, we're met with a hazy few feet of visibility. We stay close to one another. It's a challenge to both film and fossil hunt at the same time. I'm finding bone fragments, but look away for a few seconds, and my dive buddies are gone. After re-establishing my bearings, we continue the hunt. Ben finds a couple of bone fragments. They're whale ribs.
He also helps us search in a grid pattern. Here's a deer antler. An equus horse tooth. And then it happens, that familiar triangular shape. A megalodon tooth. It's not the best tooth. Its enamel is peeling and the root is worn. But it's still a three inch tooth and it's the only Megavar dive so far. I gesture to indicate the next find. It's the edge of a giant tortoise shell. Here's another well-encrusted bone fragment. A chunk of ivory. And not far from it, a piece of turtle shell. I use my dive knife to knock off some barnacles from a chunk of bone. In this limited visibility, the three of us keep checking on each other. It's heartbreaking to see all the dead sea life caused by the red tide. The seafloor is littered with it. I once again become separated from the team. The red tide hovers above me like a thick gelatin. But I decide my best bet is to swim through it to the surface and look for bubbles. The water becomes more and more red the higher I climb. And when I break through the surface, I'm alone. The other fossil hunters couldn't join us on our dive. Ben decided to take us all on a land dig. Brown, black and brown colors. Oh, shells. Calusa Hatchie Formation. <laughs> shells are fossils too. Indeed. Looked a lot of marl. What do we got there, Ben? It's a nice small piece of turtle shell. Probably tortoise, but... So I think I found a piece of ivory, but it doesn't look like it. That is a piece of bone. On ivory, normally somewhere on it you can see cross hatching. It kind of looks like mesh. Shark tooth. Oh, nice. Probably a bull. Nice color. I just found a little uh, turtle down there. So I can tell it's turtle because you can see the like, little ridge marks right there. Yeah, the little nice suture little line. line in the, mm -hmm. That's a suture line. In and the then shell. you can also see the little dots, bone holes bone where bone the marrow. bone marrow went. So, so the blood vessels came yeah. through. This is one of the largest. Uh, Coal hogs called Mercenaria Mercenaria that I've ever seen. Wow, check it out. Nice horse tooth. Horse. Turtle shell. Turtle shell. Noah, you were inches away from a horse tooth. I noticed. I'm jealous. So, <laughs> here's a nice piece of turtle shell. Here. Moments later, Noah gets turtle. <laughs> Looks more like wood than coral. I just came up over here on this spot and looks like a nice little sand tiger here sitting and on the uh, the cusp, I don't know if it's going to be able to see it on the camera, but you can even see the point on the cusp in there. And this is the first time I'm going to uh, you got it. grab it. Wow, look at it. Oh, it's gorgeous. See what I'm saying? It still has the little tip on the cusp. It has the cusp blitz. That's pretty cool. Looks like you got something there, Trish. What's that? Well, it's part of a uh, dugon rib. That's huge, though. But it doesn't really count because it was John's throwaway. Woohoo! First shark's tooth. First oh, shark's tooth. tooth for Zoe. Hey, look at that. Boom. Boom. Color's cool. So I just found a shark's tooth right next to everyone else's. There you go. Next to Zoe and Dave. Dave and. Yeah. Oh, you do have Matrix here. Yeah with all kinds of cool little things in it. I don't know that that's a tooth or not, but I would take it to Ben and ask. Yeah. And then you've got... Something. Definite bone. So I found El Lagarto, which would be alligator. You did? Spanish called it El Lagarto. Really? So hey, uh, on this little shelf right here, gator tooth. Gator tooth? Where's this? Right Hold on, let me get in there. Son of a gun. Yep, let's see, look at it. I don't know, there's a tooth here. I don't know if it's a small mako or a sand. 
Remember, the camera's running, so by definition, I'm not going to find it. <laughs> Appears to be a shell fossil imprint underneath a barnacle. Very cool. All right, you got mako. Yeah, and the root's missing, but... Go show Ben the mako. It's the first mako of the day. Oh. Awesome. Cool. Cool. What'd you get, Trish? Those are the coolest. I found my frog shark's tooth of the day. Ah, is it in Matrix? Cool. My only problem is I can't get to it. That's what makes it neat, though. <laughs> It's right there. Oh, cool. They're going to awesome? keep that whole piece, man. Yeah, I uh -huh. would too. Isn't that neat? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Two of them right here. And look, I just found a third. Woo! This is a hot spot. Look at that one. That's a snaggle. It is snaggle, dude. Okay. Yeah. I know it was one of two. Yeah. Cool. Priestess. Good job. Good job. There's this pile, man. First shark tooth. And you really got to look close, but it's a little one. Right here. Just found a beautiful shark tooth right there. Look at that. Never seen one of that color that I've actually found. So I guess it's part of a whale ear. Spin it so I can see the inside of it. That's your telltale sign right there. When you clean this out, you're going to have a little ridge in there with some pull marks. That's a whale bulla. Turtle carapace. Turtle. Awesome. And I heard there's a horse somewhere. And a partial horse tooth. I've got some of these at home, but the horses don't want to give them up. It's a bull shark tooth. Bull shark. Or, or dusky. What you got? Horse tooth! Horse tooth, let me see. That's pretty nice, actually. Oh, it's got cool colors, man. Yeah, it does. Cool colors come out of here. Hey, this, this kind of rock makes me kind of feel like it was a riverbed. A small, round rock. And there's a Meg right there. What? Laying out. Where is he? <laughs> see it shining in the sun? Whoop. Son of a gun, look at that. There's a, look at the big one in back of you. I think you just found your hot spot. Let's pull it out, let's see what she looks like. It's a little tipped. Hey, nice. Two within, two megs within three feet of each other. Look at that. After our land dig, Ben had one more treat in store for us. Welcome to my house. Come on in. Look at my collection. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Everywhere you look. Another collection. Every day, correct? Yes. Okay. How many of the megalodons have you found in a day? The most I've ever found is 69 whole megs in a day. You are kidding me. No. A normal day is 20 to 30 meters. Yes. What's the size of that, Ben? That's six inches. As big as my hand. Hey, I have a couple of fossils out and around. As you can see, mammoth teeth, gumpotherium teeth. Um, megalodon teeth. Anybody have any questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just tell us all about this magnificent. This is a what? A mammoth tooth. All right. So, is this the biggest one ever? Where'd you find it? What's the scoop? Like, tell us all about this. Um, it's a 15 and a half pound mammoth tooth. I found it a couple couple months ago uh, off Minnesota Beach. Oh! Whoa. Wow! <laughs> this is a piece of tusk. Probably a mammoth. As well as this is a mammoth tusk. They would have been 16 feet long or so had it been whole. A mammoth leg bone. Upper leg bone, I would guess. Oh, that's Look nice. at you, man. Gorgeous. Believe it or not, I still think it's cool to find anything I can find. I mean, I got the best job in the world. It's a whale vertebrae with osteoporosis. This is all bone around it. I'll bet that that hurt that whale pretty good when it was trying to swim. Most of this will be on display at the Venice Dive Center in the next couple months. And you can come in and check it out yourself. 
After seeing Larry's collection, it reminded me of my own fossils from back in the 90s, especially the ones I'd found in the Wakaiva River and donated to the University of Florida. So once again, the fossil hunters head to the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville to meet with Dr. Richard Holbert. So we're here again, the fossil hunters are here again at the Florida Museum of Natural History with Dr. Holbert, our good friend. He's showing us the secret room of all the fossils. What is the real word for this? Well, in the museum business, we call these collection areas ranges. Now, nobody's really sure why. This is where, in every big natural history museum, the fossils you see on exhibit are a small fraction of what the museum actually owns and carries. Here we have thousands and thousands of fossils from Florida and really across the world that we store permanently and so when researchers come and want to study them this is where the fossils are found. So like stuff like this, this is all donated stuff that's coming in a, and you're identifying? It's a mixture of stuff that we collected and donations and this is sort of an area where we sort of are processing different things and they're in different stages of processing. We have many years of work still to be done just on the stuff we have right now. And once all that happens, it gets put in all of these Yes, the cabinets, cabinet, yes. The, ca the specimens are permanently housed either in a cabinet or if they're too large to fit in the cabinet, like some mammoth and mastodon bones, we have some big shelves in the back. You mentioned volunteers help you out here. How do we find out about volunteer activities and the type of things that we might be interested in doing? We have two types of basic types of volunteers. Those that work in the collection, uh, it's all on our website, and we also have volunteers who help us out on our digs. And again, that's, that will happen periodically. Why don't we look at some of the stuff that Don collected a long time ago? Oh. Okay, so, you know, we use these compactor systems so we can store more cabinets in the same amount of floor space. Oh, awesome. Cool. Well, let me call the other fossil hunters down here, guys. See what we got from the Wakaiva back in 1990. Yeah, some of the fossils from this site are really beautiful, really well preserved. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the original teeth that I found on one of the first days. And um, I've even got a YouTube clip way back from VHS in the 90s <laughs> that shows me pulling that tooth up. So how cool is that? I've Here, seen one. that. I remember. Remember that one? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Since I've never held a mastodon tooth before. We gotta make certain that everybody out there knows in TV land, we're not talking dinosaurs here. Those are all extinct 65 million years ago, and none of the rocks that are near the surface of Florida are that age. And so all we have in Florida are things that are approximately uh, 30 to 35 million years and younger. Uh, and so this animal here was living in Florida probably roughly 15,000 years ago. Cool. Very nicely preserved uh, llama jaw. So llamas actually- Where's my llama? No, were llamas actually in Florida? Llamas actually evolved in North America. Really? And then dispersed or migrated into South America. All so right. So llamas are North American natives. Mm -hmm. So there, this is one of two kinds of llamas that are common in the Ice Age Florida. Mm -hmm. This one's called Paleo Llama. Paleo Llama. And then okay. the other one is called Hemiakinia. And then we had like yeah, a, a, a little nice baby mastodon tooth. Oh, beautiful. So that was- how cool is that? And then we have mammoths. A mammoth coming up. That would have come near the train trestles. There's an area of the Wakaiva where these old train trestles fell. And that was one of the ones from the train trestle that came up. So we got some sloth. Here's a nice beautiful. claw. Beautiful. Look at that claw core. Wow. What a beautiful wow. claw core. Nice. So yep. what species is that? This is Paramylodon harlanii. And then here are some vertebrae. This is a, wow. 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 Very wow. Sloth vertebrae, relatively speaking, they have these very large vertebral uh, canals. So I, I love glyptodonts. Are they, were they browsers or grazers? They're, uh, I've only found one tooth of a glyptodont, and, I, and it's pretty flat on the surface. Right. I think the general consensus these days is that they were more likely to be grazers. Cyptoceros amatorum. Uh, is there a chance we could see that? Sure, just up ahead. All right, let's take a peek at Cyptoceros amatorum, and perhaps you could explain why uh, you guys ended up naming it that. It's a member of an extinct family of artiodactyls, the same group that has cows and antelope and camels and giraffes. But again, it's a completely extinct group that not only had horns above the eyes, but this 
sort of forked horn above the nose. And so this specimen is very important scientifically because it's what we call the holotype. When the new species was named Kiptosaurus amatorium after amateurs of fossil collectors, a specific specimen has to be designated as the type specimen of each species. And it's the sort of the premium specimen, the one that we consider securely identified. And wow. so they're very important uh, scientifically. Whenever somebody makes comparisons of other things to Kiptosaurus amatorum, they have to use this specimen to compare it with. Uh, but for the most part, all the specimens done of this are from Florida. Wow, that is amazing. And so is this entire collection. What do you guys think, huh? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Definitely. And it was on its way to being a fossil before I dug it up. And I almost had a heart attack. I almost had a heart attack because I was so happy. As our first season draws to a close, I'd like to thank the fossil hunting community for inviting us into their amazing world. It's a great feeling to know something you've discovered will be shared with future generations. So remember, fossil hunters, keep looking down and... Fossil!